Let's talk a little bit about the Federal Reserve and the money market model. The Federal Reserve in some ways is like a dam. A dam controls the flow of water. Too much water, you end up with a flood. Too little water, you end up with a drought. The Federal Reserve, when they engage in open market operations, choose to either allow more water, i.e. money, into the banking system or less money into the banking system. So here I have a picture of a dam with money as the water, and the Fed can choose to either increase or decrease that flow of money in the economy based on their decisions through the Federal Open Market Committee. Now let's take a look at the money market graph because this graph is an important graph for those of you that are going to take the AP exam. First of all, let's identify what's on the X and Y axes. On the Y axis is always the price of something. In this case, it's the price of borrowed money, specifically the nominal interest rate. On the x-axis represents the quantity of money. On this graph, we have a perfectly inelastic vertical money supply curve. It is inelastic because the Federal Reserve controls this and at any given time can choose to increase or decrease it based on market conditions. We have a downward sloping money demand curve, which represents the demand for money in its most liquid form. So it is the preference for liquidity on behalf of the consumer or on behalf of people that might hold money. At equilibrium, we have an equilibrium interest rate, nominal interest rate, and an equilibrium quantity of money. Now, the Federal Reserve can choose to adjust the money supply based on conditions in the economy. If they choose to increase the money supply through buying bonds, what we will see is a responsive decrease in the federal funds rate and subsequently a decrease in interest rates in the overall economy. As we can see from this point, sliding down the money demand curve, people would prefer to hold money or hold cash in its most liquid form. That is known as expansionary monetary policy and again comes through a bond buying program of the Federal Reserve when they engage in open market operations to increase the money supply. Similarly, the Federal Reserve can reduce the money supply. And if they reduce the money supply, we see responsiveness of interest rates as interest rates increase in the overall banking system. So if the Federal Reserve chooses to target a lower federal funds rate, they will increase the money supply. If they choose to target a higher federal funds rate, they will reduce the money supply. If the Federal Reserve wants to reduce the money supply, what they will do is they will sell bonds on the open market. Subsequently, this will vacuum money out of the existing reserves of the banks and as a result lead to higher interest rates. Now fundamentally, the Federal Reserve has three tools at their disposal. They can engage in open market operations, they can change the required reserve ratios of the banking system, or they can adjust interest rates, which in some ways is married to the first. Either way, if the Federal Reserve chooses to increase or decrease the money supply, this will have an effect on the nominal interest rates in the market. In addition to a shift in the money supply, the money demand curve can also shift. The demand for money might be influenced by factors such as an increase or a decrease in income. A household with an income of $10,000 per year is likely to demand less money than a household with $100,000 per year. Additionally, as prices go up or down in the economy, this will cause individuals to either demand more or less money based on the increase in price or a decrease in price. Also, with the advent of alternative forms of payment, we have seen an increase or decrease in the demand for money. So, if we see a shift to the right in the demand for money, this will cause interest rates to increase in the overall market. If we see a reduction in the demand for money, we will see a reduction in the interest rates in the banking system. So fundamentally, whether we're looking at the change in money supply or the change in money demand, what we're really talking about represents a change in the overall interest rates in the economy, nominally speaking. So if the Federal Reserve chooses to increase the money supply and adopt expansionary monetary policy, what would they do? To increase the money supply, the Federal Reserve would buy bonds. This is also known as an easy money policy, where the Federal Reserve makes credit more accessible and easier to obtain. If they chose to decrease the money supply, they would sell bonds, and it makes it more difficult to obtain credit. 
In terms of the reserve requirement, if they wanted to increase the money supply, they would reduce the reserve requirement, making it fundamentally easier for banks to then loan more excess reserves. If they wanted to make it more difficult to lend money, they would increase the reserve requirements. Ultimately, if the Federal Reserve wants money to flow in the banking system, they would lower the discount rate or the federal funds rate, making it easier for banks to access liquid assets. And if they wanted to make it more difficult, they would raise those rates. Now, the price of bonds work inversely to interest rates. So if interest rates are falling, the price of bonds and existing bonds are rising. Conversely, if the interest rates are increasing, the price of bonds are falling. So that's a quick summary of the money market model and some of the tools of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy.